Hi everybody, this is Julian from RC. Model A-B testing and human preference testing are really important parts of your model evaluation process. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can easily build a small Python app to A-B test models present in RC Conductor. So we'll run parallel generation, we'll be able to vote for the generation we prefer, and we'll also compute some similarity metrics, a good topic. Let's get started. Okay, let's run a quick example and then we'll start looking at the app itself. So we can pick from all the models that are available on Conductor. We have our own SLMs plus LLMs, so why not try Blitz versus uh, O3 Mini. You can type a query here or I have a, a few hundred prompts that we can use here. Uh, why not this? Click on Submit. Okay, so now we're sending queries to the two models, generating an answer, and when they're done, we're gonna see the output. We're gonna see uh, similarity metrics, helping us understand how close or how far those two uh, answers are. So here are the answers. Okay, one is a bit longer. We see the similarity metrics. So Jaca, uh, cosine similarity, uh, Levenstein, and semantic similarity, which is computed with uh, an embedding model, a sentence transformer model. And then uh, I'm using the metrics and a, and a prompt to write a, a text-based summary here. And I could vote for one of those. So, well, let's say I prefer this one. Uh, I'm gonna save everything to a local JSON file, right? So model names, the prompt, the two responses, the metrics, and I can use that for further analytics down the line, okay? So that's the app, now let's see how it works. You'll find the link to the repository in the video description. And um, obviously you recognized uh, the user interface I'm using, Gradio, uh, which is pretty convenient, especially for folks like me who are incapable of writing any UI code. So this makes it pretty simple. And uh, and I guess cursor fills in the blanks. So that's good for me, right? Good enough for me for sure. Uh, so I won't cover the UI in too much detail. Uh, you saw it, right? Uh, uh, some text box and um, and buttons. And I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing clever about this, okay? But that's where the uh, UI code lives. I have a CSS to uh, try and make this thing look a little nice at least. Colors, etc., code boxes, okay? Uh, again, thank you Cursor for this. So uh, that's the UI, nothing, uh, nothing particularly interesting. The core of the app is the, the function called AB test, as the name implies. That's where we send queries to uh, model A and model B as selected by the user. So two parallel queries. Once they complete, we retrieve the time, uh, we retrieve the number of tokens we generated, and of course the content. Then we compute the similarity metrics. Uh, we generate the little summary you saw on the, on the side. Um, then um, for some models, I have to sanitize uh, the, the output. There are some tags in there that don't play nice with uh, the markdown box in Gradio, so uh, there's a little bit of cleanup here to make sure we can display this properly, right? And uh, and that's really it. Um, the rest is just uh, creating the uh, the client to send the requests and you know loading the embeddings model. I mean, there's a fair chunk of uh, of uh, utility code there, uh, plus of course some some functions to you know, save the feedback to the file, etc., etc. display it, reset it. So let's take a look at how we compute the metrics and maybe how we generate the summary. So let's go and see this. So we take the two texts as input and then um, for models who have uh, reasoning capabilities like DeepSeek, uh, I'm actually excluding all the reasoning, I'm just comparing the the final text that's generated. So anything enclosed in think and slash think tags is just 
excluded, right? Uh, because it's, you know, it's not relevant to compare outputs. And then I just call the four functions here, right? Which are implemented in this file. The first similarity metric here is uh, the Jacquard similarity. So uh, here we compare the intersection of the two texts to the union of the two texts. So if the two texts are exactly identical, well, their intersection is the full text and their union is the full text. So the Jacquard similarity value will, will be one. Okay, so one is perfect similarity, zero is uh, completely, uh, completely different. Okay, so that's a, that's a common metric. Note that it says nothing about meaning. Okay, it is only about uh, are we using uh, the same words in the in the two texts, right? And not even in the right order. So it is really just a measure of um, are we using the same words to talk about uh, the two topics? Okay. Uh, the next one is cosine similarity. Uh, using a bag of words. So uh, we find uh, words that are present in the two uh, texts, and then we build word vectors and we compute their frequencies, right? So we find the same words present in the two texts, count them and build vectors, okay? And that gives us two vectors, one for each text, and we compute uh, the, the dot product and, and the, uh, eventually the cosine similarity, okay? So here, once again, this is a measure of uh, are we using the same words? There's no strong sense of meaning. There's no strong sense of uh, sequence. In fact, none at all. Uh, but this is a popular way to compare uh, text. So it's worth having. Uh, the next one is a little more exotic. It's called the uh, Levenstein uh, similarity. So here, uh, this is a more complex calculation. Uh, we compute how many edits are needed to go from text one to text two. And edits could be um, uh, removing a character or uh, inserting a character or uh, substituting a character. Okay, So there's a bit of a formula to this. I, I'm not going to cover it. Um, but basically, this is, um, you know, again, a metric of how much effort is needed to edit text one into text two. Okay. So slightly different take on, uh, on text similarity. And the last one is uh, semantic similarity. So here I'm using um, an embedding model. I'm using a, a sentence transformer model to uh, encode the two texts into, uh, into uh, a vector, into an embedding, and then compare the similarity of those two vectors, All right? Very simple. So model.encode, text one, text two, and then cosine similarity between those two uh, text vectors, so to speak. Okay. And so all the metrics uh, have the same uh, range. So zero is completely different. One is exactly the same. Okay. And I added some examples. If you want to play around, uh, you can just run the similarity uh, script just to get some, uh, some inline examples here. Okay, so that's it for the similarities. Once we've generated the metrics, we can use them to write a short uh, text description of, uh, of those metrics. And that's what I'm doing here, right? So passing the metrics, uh, passing a prompt, okay? Analyze these similarity metrics, write a one paragraph summary explaining what these metrics indicate about the similarity, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, and feel free to, to tweak that. I'm also passing the two texts just in case. And I'm asking uh, Virtuoso Large to write me that nice little summary that you see on the side, right? So that's all there is to it. Just one last thing here. Um, if you want to add your own prompts, you can add them to uh, testprompts.json, one prompt per line, right? Th these are the ones that get randomly selected when you click on the button, okay? So you can just add whatever makes sense to you. Okay, so now let's run another example and maybe discuss the uh, similarities. So let's take, uh, let's keep Blitz here and maybe, yeah, Virtuals or Large. And let's do, oh, not code generation. Yes, why not this? 
how is AI being used in the insurance industry for risk assessment? Okay, so let's run this. Now you know how it's working under the hood. Note that here I am running Gradio uh, locally, um, but I'll uh, I'll show you how I deployed this on uh, on Hugging Face as well if you want to do that. Okay, so here are the two responses. Pretty similar. Virtual Zolarge again, a little chattier. Okay, so let's take a look at the metrics. So uh, Jacquard and Levenstein, fairly low. Cosine and Semantic, fairly high. Semantic, very high, actually. Okay, so let's see what uh, the summary says. So the similarity metrics reveal a nuanced picture of their relationship. The Jacquard similarity of 0 0.27 and Levenstein of 0 0.30 indicate a relatively low overlap in the exact word and phrases used. Okay, so exactly what we saw. Those two metrics look at similar words. Those two models uh, have different architectures. They haven't been trained together. They don't have the same vocabulary. So that's not a surprise, right? Um, not a surprise that we see different words being used. However, the cosine similarity of 0.84 and the semantic similarity of 0.95 suggest a high degree of conceptual and thematic alignment. So the two models talk about the same concepts, right? While the texts use different words and sentence structures, they convey very similar ideas and cover the same key points, etc., 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 right? Uh, the core message and context of both texts are very closely aligned despite the differences in wording okay and you'll see that a lot uh, you'll see that a lot uh, especially with models from different families um, the two models have been trained right so they do answer the question in in a, in a in a very correct way they use the right contexts they use the right they use the right concepts uh, they use the right relationships um, and uh, and we can see this here, right? Uh, so not a surprise that the semantic uh, similarity is very high. Um, if we saw something very different here, uh, you know, very low value, then it would mean probably that one of the models did not understand the question uh, and uh, and you know talked about something else, right? Or maybe hallucinated, or you know who knows what, but. Generally, you should see very high values there. So now let's try something different. Let's try Blitz and let's try Sony. Okay, and why not? Uh, yeah, why not this? Okay. So here we have a small model. Uh, Blitz is 24 billion parameters and we have a huge model, Sony 3.7, okay? So uh, I've already covered the differences in, in cost, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, so I'm not going to get back there. Uh, we know Blitz is uh, way, way more cost efficient. Um, but now we should be able to see if uh, the uh, output from Blitz is if, is that different from the Sony output. So given a simple prompt like this, the number of tokens is I would say fairly similar, right? Blitz was faster, although it did write a little more. Okay. And let's take a look at uh, semantic similarity. And we can see, you know, semantic similarity is still, you know, almost 93%, okay, very high. So yes, the models use different words, but they still talk about the same thing. And, and one way to put it is Blitz, a 24B model, is able to answer this question using um, a very, very close output to the Sony output, right? So if you consider Sony as the golden standard, uh, one way to put it is Blitz gets very, very close semantically to that golden standard and in a much more cost efficient way, which, you know, to me is uh, an interesting thing. It's not just about cost, it's, the, it, it's cheaper, but the model also writes about the same things and using the same concepts, okay? So that's pretty cool. Maybe I want to use Blitz, maybe, Blitz is all I need here. Okay, so I think that's that's one way to use uh, to use this tool. 
obviously um, um, you can tweak it a little more and uh, you can even use it for uh, uh, human preference testing right have your users save their responses and uh, and then run some analytics and maybe maybe fine-tuning who knows uh, leveraging that data as you can see it's not difficult right uh, and, and user preference testing is uh, is a very important step if you want to host this on hugging face uh, you absolutely can uh, here's my uh, my private space where I pushed exactly the same code uh, and um, and yeah it's running fine let's run it right now um, and this can be an easy way to uh, expose maybe um, uh, a private space to your uh, user community, get them to test, get them to enter feedback in a, in a safe way. That's really what I wanted to show you today. A nice little tool for model A-B testing and uh, similarity metrics and you know collecting user feedback. So uh, the code is available. Add whatever makes sense to you. Have fun with it. And thanks a lot for watching. There's more content coming as always. And until next time, my friends, you know what to do. Keep rocking.